Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now, let us come to the, the major themes of the information society. There are three major themes. One is information uh, in an inf information workers in an information society or information workers in an information economy, political and global aspects and an information culture. Okay? Now, let us see information workers in an information economy. It is clear, it is clear from job advertisements at least since the 1980s, one's chances of obtaining employment are enhanced by the possession of qualifications in microelectronics, computing, systems analysis telecommunications, operational research, software design, uh, fiber optics, expert systems and so on. But what does this proliferation of the new job mean? What does it mean? Who are these information operatives? Uh, I am using Tom Stonier's term here, information operatives. What contributes, uh, what contributions do their activities make to the pattern of such social relationships? Okay. First one is very important, what does this proliferation of new job description mean? Secondly, what are these information operatives for terms to, I am using the term uh, coined by, uh, I mean information operatives coined by uh, Tom Stonier. What contributions do their activities make to the pattern of social relations? Central to, central to much information society discourse is the contention that information workers are rising to a majority within the labor forces of the advanced societies. But just who are these, I mean, I mean it is interesting to see that who are these information workers. If we say information workers in an information economy or information society, then, then who are these information workers? Unfortunately, because they do not actually um, explain what information is, okay, the categories are blurred. We can only define them as data which has been which have been organized and communicated. Okay. Judges, rent collectors, they find themselves in this sector. But doctors, for instance, have an ambiguous occupation, straddling self service as well as information centers. Few studies of information work comment on its purpose, function, or content. Without this, however, we cannot know who makes decisions. This is important. What are the parameters which explain information? One, what is the purpose, function, and content of the information? And what is the relationship between information knowledge and power with regard to the social significance of research and development and who makes such decisions and on what basis or with what effect. Masses of computer generated information confers no power whatsoever on those who use it. Whereas, at certain points within organizations it may be crucial to the maintenance of power. As it happens, post-industrialism also glossed over questions of information, knowledge and power, especially with regard to the social significance of R&D. The sheer amount of R&D in any given society does not tell us about these questions. Okay? Uh, the, the 
I mean we learn nothing about the social role of scientific and technical knowledge, the price put on it and the power of those who manipulate it, who control it. The fact that R and D is often financed for political rather than social reasons and developed for military rather than economic purposes pulls the rug from beneath the bell inspired idea the, the, that universities are crucibles of power in the modern world. The current squeeze on university funding and pol the politicizing of technology policy makes the idea laughable. Okay? That, mm, that said, uh, having said this, changes are occurring uh, in the occupational structure of the advanced societies. While the relabeling process, uh, uh, I mean, noted in Krishan Kumar's uh, reflection on uh, post industrial societies. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, Krishan Kumar was a critique of post-industrialism, and uh, I mean, it, it still occurs. Though today it is uh, programmers becoming software architects rather than plumbers becoming heating engineers. There is expansion at managerial, professional, and technical level. Okay. Then, two major questions are raised. I mean, uh, I mean. Before, before coming to those two major questions, let us see uh, uh, a strong link between innovation and economic growth. Hence, the frequently exposed British worries about the lack of domestic R and D funding relative to other countries. David Lyon argues this. David Lyon poses two major questions, which are raised by the discovery information work and an information sector in the economy. First. Are the apparently new categories of work and occupation leading to shifts in power? Is there an emerging information technocracy which is wresting power from previously dominant classes? What opportunities for women are opened by the spread of IT? What is the likely effect of IT on industrial relations? Okay. When British Rail computerized its freight system, for instance, many middle managers found their positions were simply redundant and personal in subordinate positions actually discovered that uh, they had new powers of control over the work process. The second question is how accurate is the idea of an information sector and is there a historical march through the sectors as uh, was uh, uh, examined uh, as was um, drafted by uh, Alvin Toffler that agrarianism gives way to industrialism and industrialism to information society. This point, this point affects not only the advanced societies, but also those to which the promise is alluringly held out that uh, they may be able to jump straight from a non-industrial to an information society. Is this really possible? or does informatizing depend upon an already advanced situation. When you talk about informatizing, I mean information society, does it not depend on an already advanced, advanced social setup, economic setup? Okay. Uh, if, if IT is universal, then whatever kind of IT that you find in US, you will also find in India. That is why IT also is context specific. Okay. It is also culturally mediated, socially mediated, economically mediated, politically uh, maneuvered and so on. Okay. Let us then, then from, from information workers to an information economy, uh, information workers in an information economy or information society to political and global aspects. Okay. This is another theme of the, this is another major theme of the information society. Okay. Uh, that echoes of post industrialism are again heard with respect to the political and global aspects of the information society. A common feature of each is that opportunities for uh, political choice and participation will increase. Okay. The difference, however, is that the means of implementing this is now visible particularly in the possibilities of two way interactive electronic networks. The extreme case is that 
the extreme case is that of an instant referendum in which voters views are canvassed in canvassed via cable television which allows people to receive as well as transmit signals from their living rooms more soberly it is seen as a means of enabling an electorate to be more informed or for decision making to be more decentralized those committed to ideals of democratic participation on both the right and the left of the political spectrum may advocate the harnessing of new technologies to such ends without adequate access to modern means of communication any idea of a just political community is needed is is indeed a chimera but but a number of uh, but a number of important questions are raised by this not least how the necessary telecommunications infrastructure is to be set up okay this is important in the in the absence of and and a policy policy is also important to to examine this to uh, run this uh, in the absence of a coherent policy which is intended to ensure equal access of all to such a communications network it is difficult to imagine how dreams of electronic democ democracy uh, could be translated into realities the prominent source of anxiety however is a threat uh, uh, that that uh, 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 David Lyon uh, suggests that uh, threat which he anticipates that does the widespread political and administrative use of extensive databases which allow for the easy storage retrieval and transmission of personal information portent of future fraught with the dangers of electronic uh, eavesdropping on the one hand police defense social security and uh, and mm. other personnel reassure the public that no innocent person need have any worries about improper prying into their private lives on the other cases of wrongful dismissal or arrest which are traced to erroneous computer files serve to fuel fears that in fact ordinary citizens may well be at risk but are these computerized forms of surveillance okay and intrinsically new departure or do they rather represent an extension of state garnering of information on citizens which has been occurring for many decades is it merely the use of these databases by law and order agencies which creates potential perils for citizens or is a deeper process at work in which more generalized forces of social control achieve more power by computerization and what exactly are the risks involved against which data protection laws and policies are directed is wrongful arrest of the tip of an iceberg the submerged portion of which conceals a fundamental issue of invaded privacy and impugned integrity this this of course is only one aspect of the state and it connection okay the connections between government activity and economic technological developments are numerous and significant whereas bell insisted that the relatively independent operation of economic and political spheres this position is exceedingly hard to justify for for david lang it is quite clear that the the pol polity and economy are interdependent and the relationship between the two is far from simple bringing the global situation into focus however other connections between the political and economic become clear according to bell i mean uh, there are there are many many uh, cases where you will find um, as we have already discussed about political choice and participation i mean uh, in the context of re instant referendum and more informed decision making uh, in the context of uh, accessibility and surveillance um, i mean more secure society or the threat of an orwellian society uh, i mean that um, that prominent source of anxiety that we discussed uh, that does the widespread political and administrative use of extensive databases which allow for the easy storage uh, retrieval uh, transmission and of personal information 
portend a future fraught with the dangers of electronic eavesdropping or well concept okay uh, or the relocation of workers and technology transfer north south divide that is called digital divide digital divide what is the digital divide? digital divide i mean the it is the gulf between i mean gulf so far as the accessibility to it between the developed countries and the developing countries is concerned then you may say why only developed and developing countries you may say more resourceful regions less resourceful regions you may say in the context of color in the context of class uh, even the gulf between uh, uh, the gulf in the in the accessibility of technologies or it um, uh, between the rich and the poor okay between the blacks and the whites between the men and women i mean digital divide it it discuss it is discusses the the uh, the gulf the the gap uh, in the accessibility of it accessibility to it mm, between developed and developing nations okay and and it is not only uh, uh, it is not only the national sovereignty of the of the larger and more powerful countries which is challenged by the power of transnational corporations the phenomenon of deindustrialization for example often viewed in the northern hemisphere in terms of the shrinking proportion of the labor force involved in manufacturing may be equally well understood as the partial relocation of workers to offshore plants in the south the information society is not inaccurately depicted as a global phenomenon the the current expansion and development of microelectronics related industries require uh, a world market there is no doubt there is no doubt that the technological potential for beneficial change is tremendous uh, and nothing in uh, i mean i mean uh, 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 for example uh, stonier uh, tom stonier alfin toffler uh um, and others they make a lot of this angle stonio reports uh, great gains made in the upper volta village of uh, tangai you know when a solar uh, photovoltaic uh, powered crane mill and water pump were installed this is an example what he of what he calls the second silicon revolution such advances he uh, uh, stonio states correctly are dependent on technology and information transfer that that such changes will take place and that the post industrial economy will produce the wealth of information to make make it all happen is rather more to question okay now as 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 a matter of fact things are somewhat different despite dreams of poorer countries catching up with richer ones and leapfrogging the industrial era the 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 situation is overwhelmingly not just one of interdependence but of, but of dependence while the advanced societies produce silicon chips comprising hundreds of thousands of elements in africa only one person in 18 has a radio this is the north south divide this is how the the uh, uh, the, the 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 gulf between the rich and poor nations so far as accessibility to it is concerned okay uh, far from narrowing the north south divide the evidence suggests that ip helps it it helps to widen it it in fact has widened the gap between the rich and poor nations as uh, uh, yuan rada uh, has uh, observed technological fixes of whatever nature um, are uh, whatever technological fixes of whatever nature Uh, are nothing but a drop of water in the sea of reality no treatment of the political and global aspects of it can afford to ignore the connections between between new technology and the continuing i mean uh, 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 new technology and the kind of warlike situation which 
um, uh, we have been witnessing uh, uh, for more than a century now, okay. including the two world wars as well as the cold war even the post uh, um, uh, Soviet debacle. Okay, that war like situation okay, is created. It may be created for oil, it may be created for IT, it may be created for um, religion, it may be created for region, it may be created for imperialist expansion. Okay. And like, like earlier post industrialists, Stoniers focus is on the wealth of information which spells unprecedented affluence both at the private level as well as at the public sector, but as Krishan Kumar laconically notes that that the that the science based welfare state can be rapidly reclassified as the science based warfare state and we and with greater respect for the, the for the uh, for the actual history of the last uh, 70 years okay, since independent India's independence. Now, whether we, I mean, it, it is a science based welfare state to science based warfare state has been witnessed. Okay. This has to be examined properly, this has to be understood properly. Okay. Having discussed information in, you know, workers in an information economy and political and global aspects, let us now discuss an information culture as a part of as a, as a as a major theme of the information society okay as a as a the, the, this this uh, we have we have already discussed that uh, science based welfare state to a science based warfare state mm. okay in in uh, an information culture we notice a new kind of modernity a break with the past altered aesthetic perceptions of time and space new economic dependencies and new social interactions, new functional and quantitative way of thinking. Okay. We will we'll discuss this in detail. The, the notion of a fifth generation of computers okay, uh, raises another set of questions besides those of military prowess. Unlike previous technological artifacts which typically have augmented human energy with improved sources of power those spawned by IT argument and according to some transcend the human capacity to think and to reason. Okay. It must be said that though uh, that uh, while debate over uh, the workplace and employment aspects of IT is widespread and awareness of the political and global dimensions is, is beginning to make itself felt the cultural questions have not yet uh, have not as yet received the attention they deserve. Once again Bell's thoughts on post, post industrial culture make a suitable starting point. For Bell a new kind of modernity has been created by the revolutions in transport and communication that have uh, 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 banded together the world economy. Okay. Uh, it represents a break with the past, okay. thus replacing continuity with variety, tradition with syncretism, its agent is technology. What is its agent? Its agent is technology, which is which by introducing a new metric and enlarging our control over nature has transformed our social relationships and our ways of looking at the world. Bell maintains that technology has been the chief engine of raised standards of living and reduced inequalities, created a, a new class of engineers and technicians who plan work tasks rather than actually performing them, brought about a new functional and quantitative way of thinking, created uh, new economic dependencies and new social interactions and altered aesthetic perceptions of time and space. While, while Bell believes that cultural issues are of utmost importance, he partially disconnects according to the, uh, David Lyon, he partially disconnects analysis of them from political or social life. Each sphere has a uh, different actual principle that of contemporary culture being the desire uh, for fulfillment 
and enhancement of the self. Of course, while while writing of about post industrialism in the 1960s and 1970s, Bell could have had little clear idea of the rapidity with which the technologies, technologies uh, of computing and telecommunications uh, would move to center stage. Okay. Consideration of the consideration of the so called culture of information is incomplete without reference to uh, different aspects. Do human beings remake themselves in the image of their technology? If so, then there are obvious implications for philosophical debates about the unique place of human beings in the cosmos. Furthermore, there is a scope for critique along ideological lines, along different uh, political lines, um, economic lines, ethical lines, legal lines and it also brings us back finally, to the overriding question of this study does IT usher, in, usher us into a new kind of society. And at this point a further query is highlighted what is the social meaning of the information society? Is it better understood as a kind of myth or utopia than um, the, the social forecast it is more frequently taken to be. Now, let us before, before starting with new economy, new classes, let us have a brief critique of the information society. For the sake of clarity, okay, there are two kinds of information society thesis, each of which makes two kinds of claims. The view popularized in many media and policy accounts stresses the major social changes for the better that follow in the wake of IT information technology. This popular version may well be buttressed by the findings of social science. The other use the, 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 uh, the, the other use of the information society concept is more cautious and open ended. Here it is a problematic rather than a descriptive term the two images of information society overlap. The claims made are both analytical and evaluative and the two kinds of claim are interrelated. Thus, both kinds of information society thesis argument attempt to anticipate the sorts of social change which can be ex, uh, expected as IT is diffused through different economic, political and cultural spheres and both also provide at least strong clues as to whether such social changes are desirable. This, uh, the, 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 here the objective of, of foregrounding a critique to, uh, to the information society draws together evidence from a wide range of sources in an attempt to assess both the analytical as well as evaluative claims of each information society theme or thesis. The, the information society idea has both utopian and ideological aspects. Okay. Let us see uh, certain things, I mean some of the dangers associated with using the information society uh, 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 concept that is its ideological aspects. Okay. Three are prominent. Number one, it obscures vested interests that are uh, involved in IT and that in fact do much to shape its overall direction. I mean the it when we, when I said it obscures vested interests which are involved in IT and that in fact much to shape its overall direction I mean the concept yields no clues as to who wields power who owns IT, who controls IT, who wields power, it is it is not known. I mean it is it is not discussed that way. Okay. Repeatedly for instance, the popular rhetoric has assures us that, uh, uh, that everyone can own information or the real revolution is personal computer ownership. 
but information is not steadily diffused in a general way through all social relations, all social strata. Okay. Some uh, I mean intellectual and managerial skills are required to exploit information economically and these are unevenly distributed in society. Advanced hardware and software for information processing are expensive and therefore, the, the few uh, who can afford them are scarcely challenged by others using inferior machines. Okay. I mean the first one is who wields power and the second one the inequalities and conflicts discernible in the surface and often rely, uh, related to underlying contradictions I mean um, uh, conflicting interests between labor and capital. Such inequalities are felt globally between north and south, northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere in the theater of transnational corporations and military interests and locally whether with the word processor operators lack of control over her work or the suspected criminals difficulty in gaining access to information held about him or her. Information power is only a reality when the when access exists to the means of collecting, storing, retrieving and communicating the information. And the second one as we are discussing the inequalities and conflicts discernible on the surface are often related to underlying contradictions. I mean these two may be disguised by the information society concept and within capitalism private gain is constantly set against efforts to socialize production. In the late 20th century and early 21st century, okay, what, IT, uh, what information society has done? Information society has tried to privatize profit and nationalize loss. Okay. A, and in, in the late 20th century and the early 21st century, the latent potential for trade in information for this entry to become um, uh, for this entity to become a commodity is being realized. While many undoubtedly gain um, uh, from this process, others lose. Public libraries and private service broadcasting are both time honored concepts whose public status is under threat as information has a price put on it. Okay. If you look at new integrated services digital networks, what do they mean? They mean more efficient information services, but higher costs for ordinary telephone subscribers. Okay. Another discordant um, element which may not qualify as a contradiction in the same sense is the collusion of military with microelectronic interests in the modern world. The same technologies whose award uh, purposes and actual achievement in many cases are to reduce drudgery, increase efficiency, conserve resources and promote mutual communication are also dedicated to hostile, destructive and lethal ends. Regardless of any justifications which may legitimately be presented for, for expanding electronically a nation's defense capabilities, most discussions of on the information society conceal in the background the huge military impetus to IT research and development, IT R and D. Then the first one we have discussed, who wields power and the second one, the inequalities and uh, conflicts mm, uh, discernible on the surface are often related to underlying contradictions. Okay? And these two may be disguised by the information society concept. Uh, within capitalism, you know, you know, what we find that uh, loss is uh, nationalized, uh, whereas mm -hmm. uh, profit is uh, privatized. And thirdly, thirdly, the arrival of of the information society appears as an entirely natural event, the outcome of progressive tendencies within western industrial societies. It may be revolutionary in its consequences, such that it represents a new era in human history but it is simultaneously the obvious and logical way forward. Witness, let us, let us witness the posture struck against any who dare question the ways in which IT is implemented. Okay? 
by arguing that the information society has significant ideological aspects. We do not want to suggest that it is some kind of dominant ideology accepted by the masses for any given populace of any given populace. On the contrary, there is plenty of evidence of coolness, fear and resignation towards as well as sober and realistic acceptance of the new technologies. Likewise, it should be stressed that using the term ideological does not mean that there is a deliberate conspiracy to deceive the general public by using the information society slogan. Okay? If, if, if this is correct, then uh, 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 the, however, the, the um, effect of using it is to disguise the reality of powerful interests and beliefs at work within it. On the other hand, it is clear that notions like the information society have become a uh, working reality for many. Educational institutions meekly fall in line with pleas for closer ties with industries. Businesses do computerize, some most successfully, some soon discovering they are uh, encumbered with, uh, encumbered with uh, digital white elephants. The, the kind of critique to which this, this, this section on uh, the critique to information society aspires catches both the sense of potential for socially appropriate development of information technology without pretending that it can occur without considerable struggle on several fronts and the sober realism of the Luddite without succumbing to uh, sheer negativism or pessimism. What is a Luddite critique or liberal critique? If some questions will come up, then we will address. I, uh, I mean, by, by we must try to place them in the context of a normative and critical social analysis okay? uh, in order to show both the enormity of the obstacles to be overcome and possible routes to their realization. The yearning credibility uh, uh, gap between the futuristic forecasters and fantasies on the one hand and the hard realities of government, transnational and military involvement in information technology demands a sense of urgency within the information society problematic. It also points up to a, uh, points up vital role for serious social analysis within the social making process, analysis which is not simply set up within either optimistic or pessimistic scenarios. From here onward, what we are going to do? We are going to discuss uh, a marriage of convergence. Okay? Mm, I mean, what may be the possible social impacts of? Okay. Uh, what are the what are the factors which impact, which influence IT? Okay. What are the factors? As we discussed, the military factor, the 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 commercial factor, uh, and the government factor. Okay. These three factors. Okay. They uh, influence. Uh, the decisions within IT, the, the power relations within IT, the social relationships that uh, IT has been able to forge. Okay? Uh, discuss this fact. That is why I gave you the example why atom bomb was created. It was a part of military technology, I mean it was a part of um, war technology. It was also aimed towards imperialist, colonialist expansion. Okay? And military factors, commercial factors and the government factors, they very much influence the, the shaping of IT. 